Maine, I researched the mantled howler monkey in the Costa Rican rainforest. Research can be repetitive at times, but sometimes I find this very instructive. I would take my coffee at 4 a.m., sit in the middle of a field, and wait for the morning to call Jesus Right when I heard that call, in I went. All my senses were engaged, and I felt the Around me, I could hear a few general calls rising with the sound as I searched the menu for the And when I found those ten or so monkeys up in the tree, enjoying their day, I was connected to the larger experience of nature. This pattern put me in parallel with their experience in the Like them, I began reading the day and ritualizing my environment. That ritual is a part of me. When I came back from the coast of the dead, I was shocked by the light. I was looking around, like, traumatized, like, everything is square and dead around me. <laughs> and amongst all this concrete chaos, I saw people disconnected, which made me really sad. And I began asking myself, where can I find this vitality in my urban home? This isn't so strange to ask because over 50% of our urban population, of our population lives in urban landscapes. By 2050, this is going to dramatically increase to 70%. To me, this means our human family is officially calling the city our home. But you cannot experience home without its place in nature. Yeah, so there's that concrete squareness. Um, there's an answer to this disconnect that's brewing in America. People are bringing the outdoors inside. I believe that indoor plants are the building blocks for Americans to learn how to live with nature in the city. The indoor plant movement has exploded in popularity. I mean, on social media, community gardens, people trading plants in their homes, it's gone viral. Here are some of the physical reasons for why. Plants help you think clearly. The Royal College of Agriculture conducted a study where students were taught in a room containing plants or not containing plants. They found that there was a 70% increase in attentiveness for the students that were taught in the room with plants. All you did was put plants in the room and people's minds were changed. Indoor plants also have the power to improve the health of urban people. If you put a few sizable plants in your home, they'll create enough oxygen and humidity to help you breathe easier. This is common knowledge, but what I find even more interesting is that at the same time, these plants are converting air toxins into food for themselves. This helps you and this helps your plant. These air toxins are called volatile organic compounds. They circulate and collect in urban areas and then become trapped in your new apartment building. When NASA was alerted to this, they immediately started research because this is a human health hazard. They strongly stated that if man is to move into closed environments on Earth or in space, he must take along nature's life support system. What they found is that over a third of new apartment buildings create indoor air pollution. Ew, I don't want this. <laughs> and they've even created a really beautiful guide, if you'd like to look it up, on the 14 top plants that can help purify your air. Their solution wasn't some spaceship, it wasn't a machine. They just put indoor plants in the space and it purified the air for people. I find these facts very impressive, but it's not really what draws a human to connect with plants. Edward O. Wilson calls this connection biophilia, which is a hot term that means humans have this innate tendency to seek affiliations and connect with other life forms in nature. He hypothesizes that this actually came from when we were hunter-gatherers and we needed to strategize our environment. This is something that's occurring today as we all get used to our new urban home in cities. I find this process really interesting because people are relearning 
ancient biophilia by buying one plant. So I'm going to walk you through some of the basics of what happens after purchasing your first plant. So you go into the plant nursery, and there's a fun assortment of choices. I mean, sometimes I get overwhelmed, like, they're all so cute. They're all so different. The whole store is, like, overstimulating for me. And you're having fun. So right now, you're purchasing a thing. And that actually makes Americans very comfortable because we like consumerism. We like to buy stuff. And it's important that plants, interacting with plants, are approachable for us. And I say this because a lot of people have aversions to nature, and it stems from nature making them feel out of control. This goes straight back to our survival, because we've had to battle nature in order to create stable civilizations. I think we've confirmed that we're stable by now, and there's no reason for this fear. So by inviting one plant into your home, it's not scary, it's harmless, and you're in control because it's your space. What I learned myself is that instantly when the plant became in my home, it went from a thing to a living agent. I learned from the plant as I cared for the plant. Here I have some images of the plant being watered, flowered, eating, and it shows just how alive the plant is when you watch it transform over time. I learned that the plants need sun, so I would like follow the plant so it wouldn't die. And then I would look outside and think, oh, maybe I'll go outside, it's beautiful today. And I started watering my plants, and they were drinking so much water, so I drank more water. Water and sun are two basic human needs, so I know this sounds obvious, but the fact is a lot of Americans don't have a desire to go outside, and they have no idea how much, body, how much water their body needs. What's really fun, though, is these are just the basics. I mean, with urban plant culture, people are getting so into it. I mean, they're naming their plants, trading their plants. You know, I've made jokes with people in this audience about their plants. They're fun. They're positive, And we can all share this experience together. I've learned through plants that there's strong qualities to be taken. They teach you adaptive. Adapt, oh my god, sorry. How to be adaptable <laughs> and resilient in different environments. This is a strong quality that we all need thriving in the bustling city. Here's a picture of Amazon, quarter, Amazon headquarters located in Seattle, Washington. They've invested 70,000 square feet into their new take on the urban office. I think this is great because they're clearly harnessing the assets of biophilia. Their employees experience higher productivity and better creative processing than if the plants weren't there. Again, all Amazon is doing is bringing the plants inside, obviously in a very special, elaborate way in this case. It helps the whole group. It makes us stronger, just as I felt stronger with my own plants. It's not only offices, though. Urban, planner, urban planners are also taking interest in our obsession with the plant world all of a sudden. They're creating beautiful, creative green spaces that we can all enjoy. So on the left here, I show the divide of Central Park and the rest of New York. And I think it's a great image because it conveys how we have to choose to either be outside or inside. We have to access nature or stay in our homes or buy something in a restaurant inside. I just don't believe this is the case. And I think urban planners are catching on to this as well. On the right, we have the New York High Line, which is an old railroad that's been converted into a linear park. And they call it a living system. My family visits the High Line every time we go to New York, and it's always different. We like to go to have a nice long promenade and take a break from the fast pace of the city. This is not just our feelings, though. Studies have backed this up. So again, comparative studies have been done. Well, they'll have a 90-minute walk in an urban setting versus a 90-minute walk in a natural setting. And obviously, guess what? The natural setting wins again, and people feel a decrease in their anxiety and rumination of thoughts. 
I think this is very powerful. And what's special about the High Line is that you don't have to choose between city and nature. It merges both as you just cut right through the city. I mean, it's elevated. You see all these different versions of what's happening. I think urban planning should reflect this mindset. We can merge city and nature. I've had the great opportunity of being on a design De sorry, downtown design task force, because where we are tonight, Santa Clara, is building a new downtown. This has been special because it's rare that you get to think you might have some kind of control or influence of your greater picture where you live in the city. Our meetings usually deal with people converging and enjoying talking about what they want for their future. You know, we need to meet our needs. We need coffee. We need gyms. But I think from this presentation, we also know we need nature. So one way we kind of worked with gaining new ideas at the start of this process is we went to cities larger than our own. We went to San Jose, Cupertino, Mountain View, Sunnyvale, all these cities that are right around us that have just a little more development maturity-wise. And we all picked up on this commonality that was coming up. And it looks like this. These are mixed-use residential developments. Do not forget this word, because this is the popular format of how we are going to organize urban living for the future. Just take a moment to see what you think about this. What does this make you feel? It makes me feel nothing. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it really get, grinds my gears because <laughs> they're just so replicable. I mean, I don't like going everywhere to each town thinking I saw the same thing in the last town. Cities are meant to be special to each and every one of us. Also, I feel like if I were to buy this apartment, I'd feel like a high-density problem. This would not feel like my home. So, yeah, I really don't like these, and they torment me everywhere. I just get like civilization shock all over again. <laughs> but I do see a silver lining here. It's not often that people are spending so much money on developments like this and having results where literally no one cares. No one has an opinion on that building. You show people this building, it's like whatever. Like this is a big apartment building. And so there's a silver lining in this which is that I think we can just integrate plants into the whole thing, because right now it's an empty shell. I think this will allow people to connect with the space and really call it home. I think this is what they need. You know, they just need some, like, variation, something, really anything. So we might as well start with plants, because they so come with so many learning qualities. What I've learned is that my journey with plants has brought me to this creative solution. I would not have thought to put plants all over a building if I did not choose to care about them. What's beautiful about how people build relationships with plants in this city is that they're experimental and creative. People go on their own creative journey. We all have so much to add to society when we have knowledge of plants. So I challenge all of you to begin this journey with just one plant. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone.